Well, the finals come early for Hamilton Olympic this afternoon with the equation a stark one. They simply must win or their dreams of a place in the playoffs are all but over. And for the defending club champions in northern New South Wales, they simply cannot afford to miss the finals. They haven't done that since 2014 in the top grade. Hamilton, they come into the match as favourites, and while they have their injury concerns, it is chalk and cheese compared to the men missing for Maitland this afternoon. The Magpies visitors this afternoon have eight men who could start for them, usually starters, out of the side, and they will be up against it this afternoon. And while there's so much to look forward to on the pitch, the storylines beyond the sideline are just as fascinating. Michael Bulch, coaching for Maitland this afternoon, returns to his former stomping ground with a chance to put the dagger into his former side's finals hopes, while the man who replaced him aims to keep Olympic in the finals hunt. And here's the side that Pete McGuinness will aim to do that with. He makes no changes from the team that thumps Valentine 4-1 on Wednesday. That includes Daniel Eisenhower in goals, who came in for Tyler Warren, dropped after that defeat to Edgeworth last weekend. And for Maitland, they make three changes, changes from the side who accounted for the Jets' youth 2-0 last Sunday. James Tassel, Matt Swan and Louis Townsend are all into the side. Ryan Clark is out through injury. Alex Reid misses the match through suspension. And that's via yellow card accumulation. And Sean Pratt, he's away at Splendour in the grass up at Byron Bay. The weather for this afternoon, it's a cool 16 degrees at Darling Street. 14 kilometres now the wind from the east-southeast. And our referee for this afternoon's match is Glenn Peterkin. As I mentioned, the opposing coaches for Pete McGuinness, the Olympic mentor, he said during the week that despite their injury worries, his side won't die wondering trying to win this game. And he will make sure of that. And for Michael Bolch, he arrives at Darling Street for the first time since 2009 as an opposition coach. That was with Valentine. And his last match here as the opposing coach, he won his side. Valentine won 6-2 against Hamilton Olympic. He'll be hoping for a similar storyline this afternoon, I'm sure. So it's Maitland from left to right of screen in the opening half in their white, their home jersey, Olympic in the blue. From right to left of screen. And it will be the youngster, Tom Duggan, to get us underway. In round 18 of the NPL Northern New South Wales. And we are underway. The finals coming early for Hamilton Olympic. Joining me in commentary this afternoon, Chris Turner and Damian Smith. How close, boys, do you think this one's going to be to a finals-like atmosphere? Well, the big news here this afternoon is the amount of players that Maitland have got out. They've got a good eight regular players out of their side, so how their uh, depth is going to be coming through that is certainly a, a test for them and that's going to be a real key for me although uh, Hamilton do have a couple out in themselves but it's certainly not smudge in the same vein as as Maitland's outings yeah I tend to agree there CT I think Maitland they've got some key players out in Ryan Clark Matt Thompson Matt Cumberford James Thompson Alex Reed, Sean Pratt Chris Faison Dutton Black that's an amazing all them guys are starters aren't they so there's some Eight. big holes that, yeah there's some big holes to fill there but um I know it gives a chance for the young boys to battle through. But on the flip side, Olympic's got a few key players out. But also, this is their fourth game in a matter of like 10, 15 days. One thing that Michael Bolch is good at is working with what he's got and shuffling his sides to suit oppositions. And he'll set up. He'll, he'll know how Olympic are playing this afternoon. He'll set up accordingly. As, and as you said, CT, he'll know this ground very well, Michael Bolch. Coached here at Olympic from 2010 to 2017. Heading to Maitland just for this season. He's a mazy run, but well cut out by Olympic. Cody Lucas, that's a strong challenge from Matt Swan. Back at his former home ground for the first time. It's attempted to be scrambled away. Kyle Hodges and now on to Jake McGuinness. That wasn't pretty, but they've done the job, Olympic, in clearing the danger. Well, what, one thing that Olympic really need to be careful here is that they're in their own minds, they're expecting to win because they know so much how many players that Maitland have got out. And they've come out in a really slow fashion right now. Here's Duggan trying to thread it wide for Andrew Swan. How do you put that out of your mind? You're coming up against a side who have... Uh, we're not exaggerating here. They've got eight players out of this side, Maitland, who would usually start for them. Yeah, it's, it's really important that you do get a, a strong start smudge, isn't it? And you, you make sure you've got to get in your players' heads. It doesn't matter. Sometimes 
Smudge, you would know training nights, you know, on a Thursday night, you play first grade against the, the second squad, and how often do they get beat the first team? You know, it's a regular. Yeah, and also it gives a great opportunity for some of these young boys coming through. If you look at uh, the under-20s game today, Maitland in the 20s beat Olympics. So Maitland jumped to the top of the ladder in the 20s. So they've got some good young players coming through. On the flip side for Olympia, they've got some players out, but also they've, they've had a tough schedule. And talk to, talking to Pete McGuinness today, he said the game against Valentine on Wednesday night, they really struggled in the back end of the game. A few guys are just coming back from injury and their fitness isn't up to scratch yet or, already. And um, so I think the key for mainly, if they can stay in this game, I think Olympia might tire at the back end of the game and that could be an opportunity. But I think they need to stay in the game. As a coach, I'd always love to bring in, you know, a 17, 18 year old and get them into the game. You, how often do they do really well? Whether they can maintain it for a month is another question, but get them in, get them used to the, the speed and the pace. And as you say, Maitland Smudge come in with, with plenty of players that, uh, you know, getting a good taste of it today. He's Olympic trying to build it out from the back as they have done throughout the season. While we are on the subject of Maitland's players missing, can we just say, uh, we'll say a big happy birthday to Ryan Clark. It's his 31st birthday today, CT. Yeah, be, yeah. I was talking to Ryan Clark before the game, actually. He's tweaked his hamstring. He said it hasn't been great all, all, all year. And he's had a fantastic season. And if, if there's any a threatening player besides Matty Cumberford, there's Ryan Clark from Maitland. He's been in lethal form. And I think Pete McGuinness would be very happy. He's not... He'd be happy that it's his birthday today, but he's probably more than happy that he's not playing against him. Smudge, this is an incredible stat. So Maitland's top six goal scorers from this season are all out of the side this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Matt Comerford scored eight, Ryan Clark five, Matt Thompson four, Alex Reid three, James Thompson three, and Josh Dutton Black with two. So the highest goal scorer out there at the moment, Andrew Swan with one, McAuliffe with one. Uh, Liam Thornton, I should say, has grabbed two. So there you go. Just, just an incredible statistic. Boys, just a quick note, just at the moment, Maitland bit a, a first of the ball. Ooh. Just in the first five or so minutes, Maitland's intensity is nice and strong, isn't it? They're first of the ball. They're not pulling out of tackles. Uh, Hamilton's just started a little bit sluggish. They're probably just going to work into the game, aren't they, CT? Well, I think you hit it on the head before, Smudge, where you're talking about, you know, they've had four games. What did you say? Four games in... How many, how many days, Bart? Four, the... four games in two weeks. So that's, that's a lot of football to have played and... and you know, when you've got young players start buzzing at you, you're thinking, all right, here we go. We're going to be in for a long afternoon. I think they've had about seven games in four weeks, I think, because they had an FFA Cup game as well midweek. So it's been a very busy schedule for them. And they've been getting a few injuries from it as well. So, But you know what? At the start of the season, they won one in six, and they were sort of, you nearly counted them out, Bart, but we never did. But... Um, Yes, so they're a long shot, but now they've got a great opportunity to push for that top four. I can tell you, it was four games in 14 days coming into this one, and they did have a bit of a break before then due to wet weather matches, matches washed out. They were sort of after the FFA Cup. They had a bit of a, a week break in between there, but it's been a, a frantic schedule for Olympic of late. They're sitting sixth on the table, but their record at home has been, let's be honest, terrible of late. They've won just two of their last 10 matches here at Darling Street. And one of those matches was against the Jets' youth. And I was talking to McGuinness today, and he's still reeling about that two, loss. Two of those against the Jets' oh, youth. Two of them against twice Jets. to the Jets' youth this year. I think the last game he was reeling, he said the boys just didn't show up and aim up. And that was a great opportunity to get three points, and they, they missed out. Nice touch. And now Blake Green. Some space down that left flank. Zach Thomas got some solid contact, but it will come back in via McGuinness. Attempts the strike, but sprayed that one badly. Helens and Olympic are playing with a 4-2-3-1 set up. Leo Bertos sitting at the top of the point. Apart from the, the little half touch he got uh, before the ball went out for a throw, and he hasn't seen any services yet. Smudge, you, you would think that you'd be looking to hit his feet. Oh, exactly. But the thing is, I was talking to McGuinness before the game, and he hit the nail on the head. They haven't really got a number nine. They've got Jed Hornery and Simon Mooney both out at the moment. They're their number nines. He, he started with Reese Cooper last week up front, and he got a little bit lost. He's better playing at the number 10 facing forward. Leo Burtis, as you know, he's a more of a wide player, but he, he's got limited stock at the moment due to injuries, and obviously Burtis is playing up the front. But he'll look to come into those pockets, get good touches. So I was going to ask what McGuinness is thinking is there around Burtis playing in that number nine position. Are you thinking he's an experienced player? He knows where to be. 
Well, one thing that he can do, and it's not just being experienced, it certainly helps, but his ability to hold the ball and let play catch up to him when balls are played in. So he'll he'll offer that. And when you're talking about experience, nowhere to be, he'll put himself into the pockets that Smudge is talking about to make himself available. And he'll be definitely looking to link up with uh, Reese Cooper coming forward as well. I'd say he'll be dropping deep and Reese Cooper will be making them r- runs in behind. So, And just round the ground, Western 1, Adamstown nil. Nice early goal for Weston. And that's always important. We've been speaking about that smudge, about Weston scoring early on. Considering their position on the table and with uh, Steve Pickett leaving, <coughs> here's Tom Stewart. Nice touch. Great ball to Scott Petter to get dragged to ground. He actually scored his first goal in Olympic colours against Maitland. That was back in round seven. Since then, he scored seven goals in nine NPL matches. It's been on fire, Scott Pettit. Not just scoring goals, but setting them up as well. I can remember a free kick from this position against Edgeworth in the FFA Cup where he set up Reese Pappas. Pappas, of course, out of the side, but still a decent ball in there from Pettit. Berotos has some work to do. Interesting smudge at that Tom Stewart has gone up for that set piece. Might be seeing a bit more of that this afternoon. Coming out of a central fullback position, injecting himself in to the set pieces. Yeah, just on Scott Pettit, like he was at Magic for a lot of years. I coached him at Magic and had a very successful um, stint at Magic. He won Player of the Year back in 2012, maybe. But uh, I think it's been a great move for Scotty Pettit. He sort of was on and off the bench last year, and this year he's really shone for the, in the Olympic colours. And he's a big game player. This is a, a crucial match for Olympics. This one swung in, well taken by Matt Trott. Five clean sheets for him and Maitland this year. Looking to keep it that way this afternoon. Here's Duggan looking up for the run of Swan. Andrew Swan, Matt Swan, Louis Townsend and Grant Brown. Back here at Darling Street for the first time in Maitland Colours since making the move at the end of last year from Hamilton Olympic. I'll tell you what, the two Swan twins will be a big game today playing against their old club. They've had their injury troubles, haven't they? Matt Swan actually, last week he played his first match since May and that was only 40 minutes off the bench. So he is short of a gallop, the number six swan out there, if you are a bit confused, because they are identical twins. Can so you we, tell we, the difference between them, CT? Well, one's left-footed, one's right-footed. So we've got six swan, which is Matt, and 11 swan is Andrew. That's right. Andrew's the left-footer, and Matt is the right-footer. Yeah, so Andrew's playing more like a number 10. Even though he's wearing number 11. Yes. The comedy's returned. I know we lacked it last <laughs> week. CT away in New Zealand. He was cracking some funnies the week before, as you heard, Smudge. Mm. Some of them controversial. I was going to say, for Matt Swan, he hasn't had much game time, but this is a great pitch to actually come and play because it's short. It, you know, it doesn't have to cover too much ground in the centre of the park. It's quite congested at the moment. That's exactly it. Cody Lucas, who scored his first goal in two years last week, oh, on Wednesday, I should say, against Valentine. Hamilton thumped the Phoenix 4-1, four first-half goals. All five goals in that one coming in the first half. But they've been inconsistent of late Olympic. They've gone win-loss, win-loss, win their last five matches. So if you're going to continue on that trend, they're expected to lose this one this afternoon. Just very interesting at the start of the game, boys. Neither side is really bombing their right and their fullbacks forward at the moment. I think they're going to be playing fairly cagey and just test each other out and probably, more, put it this way, both neither side want to lose. And they're sort of playing like that. That's how they've sort of set up initially. And they're just going to see how, how things sort of pan out. Your thoughts, CT? Yeah, I've, I've seen Blake Green once or twice just getting himself forward, but it's certainly at the moment, you're right, I think it looks more... Defence first, attack second but he's type got, mentality. He's playing high on the left. Of course he's going to get forwards. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you know, look right now, they're sitting all behind the ball defensive. They'll set up, up defence first and attack second until yep. they feel each other out and then they'll 
start to get into uh, some, some general patterns that they normally use. Grant Brown trying to plough that one through the heart of the Olympic defence. I think that's why it's important from a neutral perspective that we get an early goal at least, or it could turn into a bit of a stodgy affair with very few chances. Stodgy. Both sides. That's one of your mates, stodgy, as isn't in, it? As in Tim and Johnny, stodgy. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of them when I said that, but... Paul Hodges, 132nd match for Olympic this afternoon for Kyle Hodges. How many goals, Smudge? Zero, and he has got a sore back today. I saw him at Guinness before the game, and he's, sort of, he's under an injury cloud, but they are uh, a bit lean on trips as well, Hamilton. I did see him joking around on social media during the week. He says he's got a sore back from carrying Hamilton Olympic, I think. Is that... Did he? <laughs> Oh, great turn. Cody Lucas just taking that one over the sideline. He's got a good sense of humour, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a great guy. Best Tyler in Newcastle, isn't he, Smudge? Kyle Hodges? Yep, he sure is. Well, so there is rumours that he stuck the stickers on my garage as well. They're, they're the rumours going around. Just rumours? <laughs> Confirmed rumours? Confirmed. I think the photo <laughs> confirmed that. <laughs> Normally when you commit a crime like that, you don't get a photo in front of the garage where you committed the uh, offence. It's probably well, maybe, not a good idea. I wouldn't advise crime it. Crime is a bit strong of a word to be using there. <laughs> it's graffiti. Sticking stickers on someone's garage, CT. If you have missed the story, uh, Kyle Hodges and Blake Green decided that they would stick some Hamilton Olympic logos on Smudge's garage a few weeks ago. It was probably after being at, uh, at the pub. <laughs> on their weekend off. Here's Blake Green now. And now Cody Lucas. Now Hodges, he calls in Jake McGuinness. Good defensive structure by Maitland, haven't they, CT? They've really compacted the space here. The, the back four is a little bit deep. I'd like to see them push up about five yards to really squeeze the space. But, uh, yeah, like... It's nice and compact, hard to play through at the moment. Yeah, they certainly shut the options off, and that's really important when you, and frustrating when you've got possession and you just can't see a way through. And with Matt and Andrew Swan in the middle of the park, they've got plenty of experience there just to suffocate the life out of Olympic, don't they? And just around the grounds, boys, is early goal out at Charlestown. Edworth one, Charlestown nil. And apparently Charlestown have got nine players out. Of that side. Yeah, injured and suspended. Three of them pulled out this morning. I think saying Charles Down are in all sorts is probably an understatement. Based on that predicament, here's Zach Thomas looking up for Tom Duggan and Kyle Hodges was awake to the danger and cut it out. Jacob Bailey. He's rolled that one to Pettit. Bailey trying to dink that one over the top. Now Liam Thornton just hoofs it clear. Boys, I think if Edgeworth beat Charlestown today, I think they're virtually guaranteed the premiership. They've got a pretty good run home. I know they're playing Maitland next week, but they need to drop, drop two games. So they're, they're in the red-hot position, aren't they? Yeah, for sure. And you'd be thinking they, they should get the job done today. Charlestown having that many players out. And based on other results, they could... Have it won in the next couple of weeks, Edgeworth, depending on how Magic and Lampton perform. Magic taking on Valentine this afternoon. Tom Davies. Now up to Leo Bertos. Pills for offside against Pettit. And he was just caught offside. Boys, we've got suspended Alex Reed sitting in front of us, so we might try and catch up with him in a little while. 
if we can prize him away from yeah, what he's to, doing at the moment. Talking to Michael Bowles before the game, he said he's been hit their sixth best player this year, which is pretty good. Which is a sixth best. Yeah. Well, I was actually there and I heard him say within the top four. Oh, did he? Okay. And in my opinion, number one. So Carl Thornton dispossesses Jacob Bailey. Now Louis Townsend in towards Duggan, but Tom Stewart was towering over him. Now McGuinness. That's Threads it wide. Here's some space here for Blake Grain. Does he have the run? Oh, there's was a little bit of guile he showed there to thread it through for Bertos. Cheeky ball. Oh, very square, weren't they? The back four for uh, Maitland. Now Leo Bertos shows a little bit of skill with the back heel. Green had to get on his bike to run it down. So he cuts it back. Swan. Calm with possession and just rolled it with the bottom of his boot to Townsend. And now Thornton to Zach Thomas. Not quite sure who he was trying to do there. This is where you need for Maitland someone like Matt Thompson out there. Just hold the ball, set play up, just get a few passes going, get the patterns going, get the structures going. Great ball in by Hodges. And in the Herald yesterday, he said he was going to play, but... That meniscus injury, just too much to bear. Now Pettit takes it in towards Bertos. Blake Green making the late run. Tassel seemed to be very unsure of Blake Green right on his back. Well, I did speak to Michael Bolch earlier today, and he said Matt Thompson was told it was a four-week injury. It's been three. He goes in today, risks it's out another four or more. Just can't take that risk. He yeah, does. Great. It's the season over for him if he gets another injury today. So, just can't do that. Well, that's not what they want to do anyway. Exactly. And with some key matches coming up for Maitland next week, doesn't get any easier for them. They play Edgeworth. Yeah, and if they don't get the result today, they're still well in the hunt. They're actually still in fourth spot, and they've got a great goal difference compared to uh, Hamilton. And now Tassel, well, he's knocked that one over for a corner. He got a little bump from behind. Blake Green putting the pressure on him, and there's an issue for the Olympic player down here. Is that Blake Green? It's not Blake Green. Reese Cooper, it looks like. Yeah, it is Reese Cooper. Just wondering whether he copped one in the old... Um... Well, the assistant referee's coming here to have a chat to Glenn Peterkin to find out what exactly happened to Reese Cooper. It was off the ball. It was late. And I didn't see it at all, so I can't comment. Don't know if you two are any more informed. So I got hit where you don't want to be hit, CT. Oh, I think maybe just below the bread basket. Right in the batteries. Never a place you want to uh, get hit. Bertos whips it in and, gee, Jacob Bailey almost nodding another one in. We've seen him do that this year. Almost won the match last weekend for Hamilton against Edgeworth. But for Josh Lowe's, wonderful save for the Eagles to ensure all three points would go their way. Of course, he won that FFA Cup round six match for them against Edgeworth with a towering header laid in the match. But no goals in the NPL for a couple of years for Jacob Bailey. It's normally good for a couple of seasons. Race Cooper heads back out there and he is running very gingerly. I must say it looks quite odd, McBolch, in black gear at Hamilton Olympic, doesn't it? Absolutely it does. We're so used to seeing him down the other end and in different colours for sure. Well, last time he was here, he would have been, as an opposition coach, he would have been wearing the, uh, the blue and orange of Valentine Phoenix. And Western's really putting a good showing for Steve Pickett's final few games. They got, they're up 2-0 versus Adamstown. Oh, 
I'll be interested interested to see where that puts them on the ladder. I think that takes them up to uh, about 19 points, maybe. We'll have a quick scan. Yeah, it does. Three points this afternoon, up to 19. So if this match is a draw this afternoon, then the top four will be at 26 points. Still think it'll be a tough ask for Western, but it's so tight this year. Between that middle to lower part of the ladder, it's really only Valentine Phoenix who are way out of it at this point. Here's Swan on the turn. Now McAuliffe. Took a little deflection, and Tom Stewart rose just above Townsend. Thornton. Now Tom Duggan. To score in the NPL, the youngster, he's just being held at arm's length by Kyle Hodges. Got away from him, goes down in the box. Peterkin waves it away, but Duggan gets back up. And Tom Stewart clears the ball away. So it's been Maitland with the two best chances thus far in the first half. Great little run by Tom Duggan, eh? Very nice close ball skills. Came to Maitland. He is, he is a Maitland boy, but he uh, played with Broadmeadow Magic. For the starting few seasons in the NPL from till uh, 2017 where he went to Maitland. He's there with his brother Adam who's on the bench this afternoon. Just quickly boys, just with this game, the, neither team's getting to a bit of a rhythm, aren't they, CT? They're only getting the three or four passes together. That's about it. I think it's too narrow. So the, both sides need to play with a bit more width when they've got the ball. They can stay compacted when they haven't got the ball, but a bit more width because it is a small ground. Yeah, agree. It's potentially enthusiasm with Maitland and maybe some slightly heavy legs for, for Olympic, maybe. McGuinness had all his had their arms all over Swan there and we've got some big news, Smudge, from Adamstown Oval. Adamstown's day just got a whole lot worse. It looks like there's been a red card out at Adamstown in the 21st minute. And they're, they're down 2-0. So it's going to be a very tough ask to come back. Here's Pettit quickly turning defence into attack. Hamilton Olympic got away from Swan. And now threads it through. Great run from Blake Green. A superb run from the left winger. That was well played by Olympic. What Scotty Pettit did well, actually what happened with um, Maitland's back four, they stayed very square. So Lau's runs in beyond. And Scott Pettit did a beautiful ball in. I think if Blake Green just held his feet a little bit longer and didn't go for the ball, he, he could have had you know, time to actually control the ball and slot it in. Yeah, I think you've summed that up perfectly because that's about how I saw it as well. And just can't help but think that the longer the game goes on, you know, you, you just... If Maitland, if Maitland can get a goal, the confidence will rise, especially with the younger players. But, you know, Olympic certainly look threatening in that, in that moment. And when they're running forward at speed, particularly with the players they've got like Cooper and Pettit, that's where their dangers look green as well. Do, do you boys prefer Blake Green in a higher position? You know, he's been playing at left fullback for much of the season. Do you, do you prefer him in this higher role? Because he's been creating plenty of problems for Maitland in the front third. Yeah, I don't mind him playing a little bit higher. He's good left fullback as well, but I don't mind. He's good at one-on-one -on -one situations, driving into the box. Depends too on the setup of your team. If you're going to play five at the back and he's playing at left fullback, then you know he's going to have plenty of opportunity to get forward. So Bailey back to Grain. His pass, not the but desired I'll, outcome for Reese Cooper. Yeah, I was going to say that's where Olympic can exploit Maitland because they're playing very square at the back and they back off, don't they? CT when they're going forward, they back off, they back off, back, they back off, and they become very square and a little dink in behind and a runner going could be one on one with the goalkeeper. Maitland coming into this match unbeaten in their last four. They've only won two of their last seven. There's been a lot of draws in there for Maitland. They've had three draws in the last six matches. It's Tom Stewart for the Magpies. They haven't lost here at Darling Street against Hamilton since 2001. Just attempting to get a hold of... 
Alex Reid trying to get him away from his other media commitments, his social media commitments. Well, they're tough, CT. There's plenty of social media commitments. We all have them. Here's uh, Tom Duggan. Blake Graham with the intervention. And this isn't going to amount to anything for Maitland, but it may here for, I should say for Hamilton, it may here for Maitland now with McAuliffe. And turned over again. A lot of turnovers. CT, I'll hand over to you. I think Alex Reid was actually looking at the uh, Adamstown Western match and just getting a quick thumbs up from him. Alex Reid joining us. Reedy, thanks for uh, thanks for coming over. No Appreciate worries. That. You didn't have to go far. You're just sitting in front of us. Um, you're, you're out today suspended. Five yellow cards. Um, Potentially. I don't certainly know what your coach thinks, but you, you, as you put it, you've got this far into the season and, and done well not to be sitting out earlier. You've got a few players out today. How do you think you've shaped up so far? Uh, not too bad thus far. By the looks of it, we're sort of just trying to see what Olympic are trying to do. Um, and then we're sort of just trying to adapt to what they're doing at the moment. And with the three quick guys up front, it's working for us so far. Um, but, yeah, time time will tell. A couple of the younger players to come in that have come into the group. Any to keep our eye on for the afternoon? Uh, you'll probably see a, a fair bit a fair bit of running out of Lewis Townsend. Um, and Justin, on, they just whipped the ball in there. He's lightning quick. Um, but young Tom, Tom Duggan up front. Good on the ball, good holding it up and, and whatnot. Here's Scott Pettit with an opportunity for Hamilton Olympic and Matt Schott just sort of pushed him over towards the goal line and in the end the danger will just result in a corner kick. And just quickly, Reedy, before the corner, you'll be back next week because you're just out on yellow cards. Who, are we, who else are we expecting to see back? Maybe Matt Thompson might be one of them? Uh, I'm not too sure the extent of their injuries at the moment. Um, there was sort of touch and go with him and Clarkie uh, on Thursday um, but I'm really not too sure here's the corner called in by Bertos again to Baylor I think there was a handball in there and it will be a penalty well Swan is saying that it was Jacob Baylor that handled the ball now that's what I thought as well I thought it was Jacob Bailey who handled in the box and not a Hamilton defender and I think that common sense will prevail here and it will so it is not a penalty. I, I was concerned there because I thought it was definitely Jacob Bailey's arm, well, both hands that struck the ball. And you would not say a defender, just stick both hands in the air. That's right. And if you have a look, no, there's no complaints from, uh, for Hamilton either. Well, that would have been a disaster if that... Penalty went against Maitland as Swan rises. Here's Daniel Eisenhower with probably one of his first touches. This is his second start for Hamilton Olympic in the NPL. First couple of games after replacing Tyler Warren midweek against Valentine. Considered just a one goal. Aaron Nine Kuru scored that one. It was a wonderful goal. Probably one of the Best we've seen so far this season. Now Jake McGuinness. Now Louis Townsend. Keeping an eye on McGuinness. And now Davies. Pettit. And Reedy, just uh, just to finish up, mate. Just We were talking about players to come back. Are we expecting... You said you weren't sure on the extent of the injuries. You'll be back, but sorry, I missed the, that last bit. Are you expecting anyone else next week? Um, yeah, not too sure if Tomo's going to be back. He was a bit touch and go on Thursday. Um, Clarky, I haven't heard anything too much about um, with what's happened at the physio. Um, but I know Sean Pratt will be back. Um, but that's the only one for sure that I know of. Oh, mate, good luck for the uh, for the afternoon for the Magpies and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back on the pitch next week. No worries. Thanks, boys. Smudge, what are your thoughts on that? Sean Pratt away at Splendour. Splendour in the grass. What's your opinion on that as a head, as a former head coach? I wouldn't be too happy, but I think it was a pre-booked, and I think Michael Bolts knew quite early, but uh, I, I wouldn't be overly too happy with that. So McAuliffe gets brought to ground, but he's going to play advantage, Peter Kinn, and it allows Louis Townsend. Some territory down the left. Great ball back to McAuliffe. Scored last week against the Jets' youth, and 
Just lost sight of the ball. Tassel. Back in the Maitland side, James Tassel after he missed a large portion of the season with a heart issue, actually. Michael Bolch was unsure whether he would be back playing this season, so it's very good to see him back out there. Burst onto the scene last year for the Magpies. Just out at CB Complex, boys. It's 2-0 to Broadmeadow Magic. Carl Bradbury getting the first one. Unsure got the second. Carl Thornton. Played that one well. Got a little clip. Yeah, Magic trying to fine-tune before that midweek match in Canberra against Canberra FC. That's going to be bitterly cold down there at Deakin Stadium on Wednesday night. And you'll be down there, Bart, with uh, Daniel McBreen? Yes, and you probably won't recognise me because I'll be wearing about 20 layers. Do you have some clothes to donate to me? Well, CT's got thermals. <laughs> I'm He's I'm, got them on now. I'll be, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be wearing gloves. I need your gloves, CT, as well, I think. Here's McAuliffe going low and Thornton. Well, the two Thornton boys are in there. Lamb Thornton actually scored the opener last time. These two sides met in that 3-2 win for Maitland in round seven. Here's Swan. Now Tom Stewart. And a poor turnover from Hamilton there. And Thornton bounces it off McAuliffe. And now Andrew Swan low to his brother. Yeah, this game's been very much played in the centre of the park. Not too many chances from either side. Very cagey affair at the moment. I could see it being cagey right up until the probably the final 15, unless there's a goal scored. Very much like a semi-final, isn't it? Tom Stewart. Now McGuinness. Now Davies. He's afforded some space. He's put that on a dime, and Scott Pettit got there. Well blocked by Zach Thomas and Grant Brown in there as well. I think Maitland just need to be a little bit careful because they ba they back full backtrack, don't they, CT? And they really open up and they allow Olympic to go forward with the ball. I think they just need to hold their ground and sort of just stay com compressed. Yeah, and where they can, just stagger a little bit so you're not so square because that opens them up and makes them vulnerable to that little slider through, through in just behind that you spoke about before, Smudge. Guinness. So can you boys pinpoint why Maitland are so square at the back? Uh, probably comes down with a little bit of an experience. Carl Thorne's been playing at the back for most of the year. And the young boy, Zach Thomas, has come in. And they've got James Tassel. Well, he hasn't played too much first grade this year. So they've got two young boys in the back line at the moment. And Grant Brand normally plays... As I knocked over the sideline. Grant Brown normally plays uh, on the uh, as a fullback, so he's not usually in the centre of defence. So a different role for him. Tassel just chips that one straight over the top to Eisenhower. Yeah, he's all the pain left to right fullback, and you've got uh, Alex Reed and uh, Carl Thornton through the centre. So that very experienced, very quality back line when all the players are are in. So. Yeah, they've just been playing a little bit square. However, you know, it's nullified the Olympics so far, but I think they just need to be a little bit careful. Kyle Hodges between the lines to Blake Grain. Takes on Swan, tries to thread it through, but Tassel was awake. Got the boot out. And again, they're very deep, aren't they, CT? <laughs> yeah, Davies. Plenty of height and length on that. Bertos backtracking. Couldn't quite regain his footing. Now Cody Lucas. Bertos. So while Hamilton have had a poor record at home this year with just the two wins, Maitland, away from home, have been 
just as poor. They've won just once away from Cook Square Park this season. That was against Lake Macquarie in round nine, that 2-0 win. It's interesting. So a side that can't win at home against a side that can't win away from home this year. So if you do math, so I'd probably say on balance of probabilities, this one should end in a draw. And the matches between these two have ended in draws quite frequently. Three of the last five have been locked up at 90 minutes. It's Tom Stewart just deceived Swan. And I would argue, based on chances created, Maitland, I'd say Maitland probably just ahead at this point. Had that chance really early on, and then Tom Duggan kept his feet well probably about five, ten minutes ago. Yeah, for me, it's been very even. It's been played virtually in the centre of the park. Not too many clear-cut chances. I think the Olympics has been in some, good like in some good areas in that front third, but their final pass just hasn't stuck. And to be honest, Maitland front three been working pretty hard. Duggan's been quite busy up front. He's got nice tight ball skills and um, he's caused a few headaches for uh, Hamilton's defence. Jake McGuinness with the touch onto Bailey. Back to Stewart. He was part of that Hamilton Olympic side, Tom Stewart, that lost the under-20s grand final last year to Maitland. 1-0, the grand final. You two were calling that one at It was a big upset too, Jones. wasn't it? Yep. Huge great, result by, great result by Maitland. And they beat Hamilton by the same scoreline this afternoon, Maitland, to go top of the table. Or up there. They're at least up there, depending on results at other grounds. Thornton. Another misplaced ball. Michael Bolch retreats to the bench and shakes his head. Another goal at Adamstown Oval, boys. 3-0 to Western. Really taking charge of this game. It's one now. Now to McAuliffe, who played it into Duggan and now... Andrew Swan. Boys, just quickly, just on Olympic, they're, they're doing really slow build-up. Their fullbacks are slowly going forward. They need to be careful they don't get caught out on a quick transition by Maitland. Especially with the speed Maitland possessed. Tom Duggan, very quick. Justin McAuliffe also no slouch. He's uh, returned to the NPL. He, was it Valentine last year? Here he is, McAuliffe. Then he went over to Spain to play some third division football and now he's back with Maitland. <coughs> nice header. <laughs> Cody Lucas just sprays that one. Phil, as a coach of either of these two sides, you're probably going to head to the sheds. Are you going to head to the sheds either frustrated or are you going to head to the sheds happy that it's still locked up? Well, both coaches will pull out some positives from what's happened in the first half so far. I don't think, uh, I don't think either of them should be too disappointed at the moment. I mean, Hamilton, if anything, could probably break a little quicker than what they do, and I think you mentioned that before, Smudge. But uh, certainly from Maitland's point of view, the enthusiasm and their speed and their being, their, you know, their tackling and their first of the tackles, that would be something that would be pleasing Michael Bolch. And like we said before, they've got eight, eight, eight quality players out. So uh, yeah, he'll be quite pleased, I think. I think McGuinness, they've just been a bit sluggish, I think, Olympic at the moment. Their ball speed hasn't been up to scratch, what McGuinness would probably like. It is their fourth game in 14 days. Bertos, it's a decent night for Bailey. And McGuinness knows this is probably a great opportunity to get three points with all Maitland's players out. And the set pieces, as 
where Hamilton have caused the most problems for Maitland, especially Jacob Bailey's had a couple of opportunities from the header. Hamilton last week, they were kept scoreless against Edgeworth for the first time. That was the first time they've been kept scoreless in 55 matches in the NPL. That's dating back to 2016 round one where they drew nil-nil with Maitland at Cook Square Park. 55 matches. That's a club record. The previous best was 29. That was between 2000 and 2001. Pettit gets... And you oh, know what, that ground. credit goes there to both coaches on the bench. Michael Bolch, who was here last year. And and, and in 2016 McGinnis. as well. So it was two years, mm. two years basically that Hamilton scored in every game and then the first 14 matches of this season. Hodges. Now to Cody Lucas. But Hamilton, it's been a goal-scoring drought for them. Since, well, I should say they kept they scored four on, against Valentine on Wednesday night because Edgeworth last week kept scoreless. Liam Thornton getting in there. Part of the problem with uh, Hamilton, especially at the start of the year, they're conceding too many soft goals. They're nearly conceding two goals a game, so they've definitely tightened that up a bit, haven't they, CT? But um, yeah, the start of the season, I just leaking silly goals. Now Blake Green again, curls one in. Now it falls for Reese Cooper. Can he pull a rabbit out of his hat right on the stroke of half time? He's done it plenty of times here at Darling Street before. Now Leo Bertos. Had the run of Tom Davies, decided not to use it. Now he rolls it in. Bailey flicks it on. Scott Pettit into the bar. Well, that's as close as we've come to a deadlock breaker. And now this young man is very quick, Tom Duggan. And they're backtracking quickly. Here is Swan. Yet to score at his new club. Drops it back to Duggan. Great movement from Tom Duggan. And what an opportunity for Maitland. And just as his first goal in the NPL beckoned, he just blazes it over the bar. Just raised his head a little bit. As we've said before, from there, you just want to, you want to hit the target and you want to make the keeper make a save. And... Unfortunately for Maitland, it didn't happen. If Michael Bolch had any hair, he'd be pulling it out. He scored six goals in the under-20s competition this year, Tom Duggan. He's been good today. That was a beautiful touch at the, that's at the halfway line. Linked up with Andrew Swan really well. He was just unfortunate. That's what we said earlier uh, in, the, in the piece, that Olympia need to be careful. That if Maitland transition quick, because they're pushing numbers forward, the back line's pushing forward, that could be dangerous. And that was a great opportunity. Great opportunity for either end of the park. Louis Townsend, the number 15, playing against his old club as well. He spent many years here at Hamilton Olympic. Yeah, Michael Bulch gave him his chance in the top grade and encouraged him to make the move to Maitland. So not long to go until half-time interval. Both sides have a chance to restock and work out what they're going to have to do in the second half. This is the only match this afternoon with no goals thus far. Edgeworth leading 1-0 against Charlestown. Magic 2-0 up against Valentine. And Weston 3-0 against Adamstown Rosebud. Scott Pettit. Now to Blake Grain. Can they build up to something special before halftime? It would be a critical juncture to open the scoring if either side could find the back of the net. Blake Green rides the challenge, and that will do us for the opening 45 minutes. Glenn Peterkin 
Sending the shot sides to the sheds. Locked at nil-nil. We expected a tight match. We expected a torrid encounter. And we've got exactly that. Limited chances in the opening half. Tom Duggan had an opportunity but blazed it over the bar for Maitland. He's looked good in the first half. And Jacob Bailey with a couple of headers from corners for Hamilton. That's as close as we've come to a goal. Halftime at Darling Street. Hamilton Olympic nil. Maitland FC nil. This has been an interesting half, uh, to be honest with you. There's not been a whole lot in it. Both teams have had a couple of chances, but really uh, it wasn't until the end we saw Hamilton on the crossbar and then a blaze shot from Maitland just towards the back end of the first half that we saw anything. And that's been the summary of the first half where it's been very even. A lot of, lot of play in the middle of the park and a lot of turnover. Uh, certainly for, uh, for me, nil-nil is a fair result at halftime, but... All right, well, we'll take a quick break, CT, and try and warm up a little bit because it is chilly in the shade. We'll be back in 10. It's nil-nil here at Darling Street between Hamilton Olympic and Maitland FC.
We're just about to get underway in the second half of this round 18 fixture in the NPL Northern New South Wales. The match of the round, Hamilton Olympic in the blue from left to right of screen in their second half up against Maitland FC. Hamilton sixth on the ladder. They really need to win this one this afternoon to keep within touch of the top four. Maitland in fourth on 25 points, so a three-point gap between these two. Hamilton cannot afford to lose this afternoon. Then they've got 45 minutes to score and put themselves into a winning position as we are underway in the second half. CT, who do you see best placed to take all three points away from Darling Street this afternoon? It was cagey, it was tied in the first half. Will anything change in the second? One thing's for sure, Maitland are without eight regular starters, so that's, that's a factor. But... What we've seen hasn't reflected that. You, you, if you didn't know, you'd probably think everything is reasonably similar. Having said that, Olympic, uh, they played a lot of games in the last couple of weeks and we expect them to start rolling into the match. And, and uh, look, if I, if I had to pick someone at this stage, I'd say Olympic probably climb over the top. But uh, there's a long way to go and it should be interesting. What was the message from the coaches, Smudge, at the break? You've just been doing a little bit of a trot up and down the sideline. Yeah, sorry, I didn't have a chance to talk to Pete McGuinness. Well, here's Blake Green. This is a decent ball in for Scott Pettit. Again, beautiful run down the left flank from Blake Green and a dangerous ball in. Yeah, talking to Michael Bolch, he was pretty pleased with the first half considering all these trips out. Defensively, he was quite happy with it because with it because they didn't have too many clear-cut chances Olympic so he said the key is provided they say you know quite structured defensively he still believes they're going to get some chances and also on that counter-attack what we spoke about in the first half if they can transition nice and quick they might be able to get something out of it he thought he thought it was a little bit sloppy but reasonably pleased this one dinked in Phil Duggan I mean the effort to get there but Eisenhower Took it well. Eisenhower played two matches in the FFA Cup. Kept one clean sheet against Western in their round five match. That 2-0 win. And just the one goal conceded in his second match now in the NPL. That one against Valentine on Wednesday night in his debut. Blake Green. I went hard and Zach Thomas can only put it out for a corner kick. So inviting some pressure here, Maitland. Just quickly, boys, there's been another goal at CB Complex. Magic, Broadmeadow Magic led 3-0 into the break with goals to Carl Bradbury, 2, and James Vigili, 1. And Edgeworth still up 1-0 against Charlestown. And the send-off at Adamstown. As the header, Carl Thornton rose twice. Yeah, we'll have a chat about that, CT, because it was an interesting moment in that match for Robbie Turnbull. Yeah, it sure, sure was. I mean, the footage, he's on the far side of the ground, but it certainly looked it looked like uh, there was something. I'd love to see it again because it's just one that Robbie Turnbull might feel that he was hard done by. It looked to me like it was like a knee wrestle. It was a wrestle where you... Couldn't leave the ground. Here's Scott Pettit now. Leo Bertos was just overhit towards him at the back post as he swung that one in. But Bertos recovered well. Now he just chips it in towards Pettit. Falls for Cooper! And what a save from that trot. Gee, he hit that well. Reese Cooper on the volley. Strike end save there. Cooper just absolutely unleashed on that one. Matt Trot somehow, somehow, I'm not sure how, Got, got some hands on it, got it away. Big let off there from Maitland. They've dodged a bullet there. Was actually talking to Matt Thompson before the game and asked how Trotty was going. He said he's been superb. We've just seen the full extent of it right there. Olympic just starting to pull their way on top of here. Here's Davies rounding Thornton, trying to pirouette and then Swan with the intervention. Maitland haven't conceded in two matches. Haven't conceded since they played Adamstown in round 14 in that two-all draw. And that was that calamitous match where there were red cards and penalties and 
all kinds of things happening. So another chance for Maitland, I should say for Hamilton to knock on the door of the Magpies. He's got a lot of quality from the dead ball situations. Leo Bertos, he's shown that already. He's put it on a dime for Jacob Bailey on a couple of occasions. He'll be looking for the tall timber again here. And the sun straight in Trot's eyes. Very dangerous for Maitland. Tom Stewart in there as well, the centre back. Bertos just hung it up there and Matt Trot rose well. Boys just feeling the wind in the grandstand here. The wind's virtually directly behind Hamilton Olympic. I think that's a great opportunity. It's only slight, but I think they'll put a lot more pressure on Maitland come the second half. And they've started the better of the second half as well. Cody Lucas towards Cooper. Curls that one onto the boot of Lamb Thornton. Straight to his brother. Now Cody Lucas. Oh. Cooper. Thornton on to Duggan, who had that great opportunity oh. at the end of the first half, which he blazed over. Bit of a stacks on the mill going on in the middle of the park there. And now Leo oh. Bertos between the legs of Grant Brown and Scott Pettit. Almost rounded it up and... That was one well on one by with Liam Trot. Thornton. Sorry, Bart. That was well defended by Liam Thornton. He had the turn, didn't he, CT? Sure did. And that ball from Bertos, whether it goes through his legs or past him, it was the slider that it was intended. And he pulled that one out. Looks like he's just stepped it up a notch, Bertos. It looks like Olympics step it up a notch, haven't they? Yeah. It's just now, now they're into their rhythm. Speak of the devil. Except what for was that. that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well said, Smudge. Well, that's a poor ball straight. To Jake McGuinness. And again, they're very deep Olympic uh, magic here. Uh, Maitland here. Davies. You're all over the shop even, at the moment. Even, even, the magic, Hill show. even when magic aren't out there, they get a mention. The Hamilton Olympic, they started the season so slowly. One win in their first six matches since then. They've won six of nine. And I think what McGuinness still stuck to his guns, even when they were losing, getting draws in those first six games, he stuck to his guns, played the same formation, played the same structure, didn't they, CT? And then the players started to believe. They started getting results, and then the season started to kick off. And now a lot of the teams, a lot of people are riding them off after those six games, but now they've got a great opportunity. Yeah, and you look at the players they've got. They've got players to do it. That's the, that's the key. Thornton to flex the header straight to Blake Grain, who accepts that one. Again, you know, I know we've mentioned this before, but I'm impressed with the workload of Jacob Bailey in the middle of the park. I've been impressed with this young boy, Tommy Duggan. He's been very busy for Maitland. He's got nice tight ball skills. He's caused a few headaches for Hamilton. And he's a good worker off the ball as well. Yeah, he's very quick, that's for sure. And he, he certainly uh, he certainly puts himself in a position that he wants to pick the ball up often. He was on the bench of the uh, 2016 grand final winning side for Broadmeadow Magic in the 19s competition. That was the side with um, Sayeta and uh, Aquino. Now playing out at Lake Macquarie under Nick Webb. 2015 and 2016, that... Under 19 side won the grand final. And Sam Webb, who's now playing for Magic, they had a really strong side. Alex Bozanowski, I think, as well. He's playing, played first grade for Charlestown a couple of weeks ago against Lampton. Here's Carl Thornton. Now Cody Lucas looks up and sees Leo Bertos just dropped it over the top. Grant Brown awake to the danger. Blake Grain, there's two balls on the field. This is going to be a bit confusing. 
Will be a corner. That second ball still on the ground. Pete McGinnis looking frustrated from the bench there. Blake Green had a great opportunity to deliver a perfect ball for that. Just miscued it. Pete jumped up. Not too happy. And let's be honest, with the injury worries and the injury problems that Maitland have, Hamilton really should be winning this one this afternoon. A draw, I feel, is still a big result for Maitland and disappointment for Hamilton Olympic. It's still a, a three-point gap between the two sides. Yeah, but it also keeps Hamilton in the... If, if it is a draw, this season's not over. I think if Maitland win, it's going to be very difficult for Hamilton to climb back with only four games to go. They're two games down, plus goal difference is a big key factor. So I'd, I'd think it would be quite difficult. But a draw, they're still in with four games to go. Thornton. You just want to take that pressure off, though, if you're Hamilton. You, you want to win. And Here's Swan. Recovers possession. And now Louis Townsend bursting forward. Great tackle from Cody Lucas on his opposite number. Oh, look, that really is because he could have easily brought him down and it's a penalty and then they're in trouble. He just did that so comfortable, did Lucas. Sign of a quality fender. And then it just broke down. Blake Green couldn't keep it inside the line. He's had a very good year, Cody Lucas. He's played, he played really well last week against Edgeworth. He was playing left full back then because injury to Reese Pappas. They had to move him into the centre, and he was, he was rock solid through the centre, wasn't he, Bart? It's been and so consistent, yeah. over, over not just this year, but over a period of time for Hamilton Olympic. And Michael Bolch was there as well. And the thing with him, he scores goals as well. He scored a few goals this year. He scored uh, against Valentine. Last Wednesday as Cooper rides the challenge and then gets brought to ground. And the first card comes out to his former teammate, Andrew Swan. And just on that... Matt Swan, I should say. Yeah, their former teammates. He knows once Reese Cooper starts facing up, they're in trouble. And Matt, that was a good professional foul by Matt Swan. And, and look, Cooper, was he took off at speed. And everyone knows the danger that he possesses when he's doing that. He's drawing players in. He's able to get around players and drawing players and he can slide people into holes. And so that, that's the, the, real, the real danger of what he's done. And what you said, Smudge, if Swan doesn't bring him down, chances are they're on. McGuinness's chip now for Bailey. And it brings it to ground. Yeah, the runner Reese Cooper just said, just squeeze the space. It's Bailey. Just held off Thornton. Now Blake Green in a tight area. Oh. Andrew Swan gets cut down by Green, who now will go into the book. He hasn't had a good couple of minutes, Blake Green. That ball over the sideline, the miscued cross, and now the yellow card. Just going back to Pettit when he controlled the ball about a minute ago. Reese Cooper ran into his space. If Reese Cooper stayed out, Pettit was one-on-one -on -one in the box. It would have been very interesting to see what happened there. Might be just a sign of the enthusiasm of Olympic right now. They're just keen to get the job done. It's an overrun by Cooper, potentially. McGinnis unhappy with the amount of time Matt Trott was taking for that free kick. As we know, Maitland will be pleased to take a point away from this one. So McGinnis... And his side, they need the three. And they want the three as well. Thornton gets up. There's still limited chances for both sides. The best chance for Hamilton came late in that first half. Well, both, well for both sides came late in the first half. Scott Pettit hitting the post and... Uh, the crossbar and Tom Duggan with a swivel and a swerve in the box just shot over the bar from a great position. And again, the turnover has been just frequent for both sides. Here's Cooper, Thornton clash together. 
Yes, to me, sometimes there's not uh, not enough movement off the ball, especially in the middle of the park. There should be, there's no runs, ins and outs, create space. Just been a bit stagnant. I think most people are just concentrating on their defensive duties here. Neither the side want to lose. Yeah, and they just, uh, rather than running, as you say, they just seem to be just poking the ball around, you know, just trying to get little short passes in and create things that way rather than movement off the ball and running with the ball like we saw Cooper do before, more of that, and that creates some opportunities and both sides for that. I like the way Michaela for Maitland is is uh, just putting himself, he's looking ready to get involved in the match even more so. Well, he looked to be in a bit of trouble, Blake Green, a moment ago. Now he's speeding away down the left flank. Zach Thomas got in the way of the ball in, though. Tom Duggan's touch just let him down. Yeah, but he's worked off the ball again. He put pressure on McGuinness when McGuinness won the ball and there's another turnover. McAuliffe. Swerved straight into Reese Cooper. They were down 2-0 in that match in round seven against Maitland, were Hamilton, and then Reese Cooper and Scott Pettit scored a goal apiece to make it 2-2 before the man sitting just in front of us. CT. He's already putting his hand up. Alex Reid scored the winner for Maitland. Not the first time, or not the only time he's done that for Maitland this year. I know he scored the winner against Weston in round one. He'll probably remind me of the other times if there are Matches that I've forgotten. And, it, and it's usually been times from when he's come from out of the back line and been pushed up front late and, and been come up with a winner, which poses the question, should he be up in the front in the first half in the first place? But uh, anyway, we'll let Michael Bolch sort that one out. Well played. Here's McGuinness. He passed a couple. Well, I'm pretty sure he played as a striker for the North Queensland Fury in the A-League. Did Alex Reid, if I'm... Memory serves me correctly, CT. Well, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I know he did play as a striker at Lake Macquarie and did particularly well there and very comfortable, knew he had to hit the bag. And it's pity the coach couldn't coach. Yeah, well, it's probably half the battle, isn't it? Didn't know you were there, Smudge. <laughs> it's Blake Green now, Cooper. It's a great ball from Cooper and Green in behind. And there's no foul. Well, I thought that was... Almost certainly going to be a free kick to Hamilton Olympic. Would you two agree? Did you think James Tassel committed the foul? I thought it was going to be a yellow card as well. In from, the end, from this neither. angle, it did look like, but Pedigan was right there. So unless it was a dive, but he did. From here, it looked like a, a foul. But Pedigan was right onto it, so. Matt Trott, who's kept Maitland in this game. That save from the Reese Cooper volley moments after the halftime break. Jacob Bailey looks up. There is Blake Green. And just copped a little bump from Andrew Swan on his avenue to goal. Will be Bertos again to stand over it. Is this the opportunity that Hamilton needed to take the lead? And oh! Scott Pettit, <laughs> he got the last touch. Oh, wow. And straight into the gleeful arms of Matt Trott. And all of a sudden, Maitland on the break have a chance to make Hamilton pay for that miss. McAuliffe has to really get on his bike to track this one down. He does so. A couple of frantic minutes of action. McAuliffe isn't going to win the free kick after the bump between him and McAuliffe. Swan. It's knocked over by Cooper. Two top former teammates coming together again and we've got a little bit of fire from the crowd as well. Cooper shakes his head and walks away. That's why we love it here at this ground. You just ride on top of the action at your smudge. He has been a bit subdued, hasn't the game? Now it's starting to fire up, which is great. Now Justin McAuliffe. This one will go straight into the arms of Eisenhower, who has cut one from Swan in taking the ball. Is that the Swan with the yellow, or...? 
Matt's got the yellow, hasn't he? Here's Matt Swan with the yellow, yep. and that was Matt Swan coming through. So he's treading a fine line in his first start in a couple of months. Matt Swan, he's been injury. It's been an injury-affected season for him. Tassel now. He can't keep it inside the line. There's all of a sudden a bit of urgency about Hamilton Olympic, and they've turned it over. The match has just gone up a couple of degrees in temperature. The intensity, Eisenhower. Tom Davies. To another Tom in Stewart. And his ball is just looped forward. Now there is some space out to the left for Blake Crone to exploit. Now Cody Lucas with the overlapping run. As we mentioned in the first half, Hamilton have won just two of their last ten matches here at Darling Street. And Maitland have only won once away from home this season. So two sides who have not performed well in the positions they currently are in. And so far, neither side has been able to break the deadlock. And they came close there, but Matt Trott seemed to have the back post covered for Maitland. Boys, just quickly around the ground at CB Complex. Magic putting Valentine to the sword. 4-0, Josh Pennington scores the fourth. And they're already looking to next season, the Phoenix. Of course, Darren Sills will be coaching with Sam Griffin. They're co-coaching at the Phoenix next season. Is that confirmed? It is confirmed. I have it on good authority. That I'm pretty sure it has been reported. If not, it is now. It's reported. Those two will be, uh, yeah, Valentine next year. Matt Swan now. He's dug in. He's just been swarmed by blue shirts. Jake McGinnis, the man to pinch the ball for Olympic. And it looks as though... Jared Sutherland is going to be released into the match. He's missed a fair chunk of the season. Yeah, I think the last five weeks, he's a great addition to come in in this final 20 minutes. Yeah, it has. It's been five matches without... Well, five NPL matches. That doesn't include FFA Cup matches as well as Kyle Hodges takes down Louis Townsend. And he does look to be in a fair amount of pain, the Maitland midfielder. Michael Bulch looks a little concerned and Adam Duggan may be asked to warm up the Maitland defender. All four of Maitland's players on the bench played in the under-20s this afternoon. So that just shows how short-staffed they are this afternoon. But Jared Sutherland is getting ready to come out there for Hamilton. He actually scored against Western in, in round 11. That was his last match for them. Where he suffered that knee injury during training a week after. Obviously Adam's Tommy Duggan's brother. They've got a few brothers. They've got the Thornton brothers. They've got the Swan brothers. They've got the Duggan brothers. And they've got James and Matt Thompson, who aren't brothers, but they've got the same last name. And James McCullough Thompson. chips it. Swan rises, and Eisenhower took it well. Confidence-boosting grab for the young keeper. Tom Davies. Now Blake Green has switched sides, as has James Tassel, who's been keeping an eye on him. So fascinating there. It's as if James Tassel has been man-marking Blake Green. So he's now switched sides with him. So obviously the speed of Blake Green is a worry for Michael Bulch and he wants James Tassel to keep an eye on him. Yeah, I'm unsure of that. No, I don't know. Tassel is moving back over to the right and Blake Green is leaving the field of play. Yeah, I think he's just covering actually. 
Great addition to come on, Jared Sutherland, CT. Yeah, and that might be the reason that uh, Blake Green was swapped over to this side just momentarily to make this, the change quick. Peter McGuinness knows. Doesn't need to be taking up time with changes. He made that one very swiftly. So can... And Jared Sutherland provide the spark that Hamilton need. Back from that knee injury. Where he yeah, missed five me matches in the NPL. Yeah, it was uh, misdiagnosed for more reports. It was, they thought it was a grade one medial, but it was actually a grade two medial. So he was out five games. And he was just really coming into himself, wasn't he, CT? He's really... He just scored in that, that last match against Weston. In that 2-1 win where Kane Treble scored the winner. Jared Sutherland actually was man of the match that particular day at Bear Park. He was wonderful by all reports. Oh. And now Swan, collision, Bailey's down. And now McAuliffe stepping in off his right. Can he score two weeks oh. in a row? He just took a misstep and he hit the ball with his trailing boot there, McAuliffe, and it just took him off balance and the ball away from him. Just on Bailey, it looks like Tom Stewart pushed David ba um, Jacob Bailey into... Uh or push the Maitland defender into Jacob Bailey. It was strong contact, wasn't it, right mm. in front of us? It looked like a head contact as well. Mm. Bailey just straight up. Just on McHale, he's got some speed, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He just he has. let himself down at the last moment. And Duggan on the turn. Thornton. And now McGuinness, Liam Thornton trying to make up for his mistake. He's got to be careful, he doesn't. Take McGuinness down, he doesn't. And Swan, Thornton. McGuinness frustrated as he gave the ball away to Andrew Swan. Zach Thomas. Pettit was probing. And Thornton, well, he almost squished Sutherland there. You heard that. Very small frame. Jared Sutherland up against Liam Thornton, who's now got a fistful of his shirt. Yeah, you want to see Sutherland up in and around the box when he's in to jink and turn and just get into the little pockets. So Tom Duggan with speed to burn down the left edge. Away from Tom Stewart. It was a decent ball. It was away Great from Davies from, and Hodges. Great ball from Duggan. It's exactly where it had to go. Just no one on the end of it. This match this afternoon is reminding me of a slow-cooked spit roast. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And we're going to get a wonderful taste at the end, the last part of this match. Will, you, it you, will it be overcooked to, or undercooked? You've got to wait for it. You've got to wait for it. You, you guys We've talk about me. That, that's terrible. Well, we've been waiting for 72 minutes for this match just to come alight. And it's slowly just building up to that final 10 minutes. I'm feeling it's going to be just right, CT and Smudge. Yeah, I'm sure. You can't say that, Smudge. You've got to keep people watching. Well, You've got to keep building it up, saying that something's While you're happen. attempting a joke, I might just give you one now. Why didn't the chicken cross the road? Because he was too chicken. <laughs> Smudge needs a ventilator or something, I think. <laughs> I think mean, he, he needs more than that. control himself. <laughs> he was too chicken. I can't believe it's taken yeah, 70 I heard it the first time, mate. Oh, I can't believe it's taken over 70 minutes for us to get the uh, the joke out, CT, based on the this match. It's been lacking chances and opportunities, so I thought we might get that one out earlier. We just quickly around the grounds, boys. Edgeworth are getting a firm grip on this uh, trophy, this premiership trophy. They lead 2-0 over Charlestown. Lampton with the bye this week, and they're the closest side to them at the moment. So 
It's a six-point gap. And they have a game in hand, I'm pretty sure, on Lampton as well. They, well, they did, and now they won't because uh, Lampton with the bye. So here's Thornton. So it's a six-point gap for Lampton to track back in the final four rounds of the competition. If Edgeworth can take all the points, it's Reese Cooper into the book now. Well, Swan was asking for yellow, and he got Peter it. Can obliged. You'd love that, wouldn't you, Sita? You just ask the referee what you want, and he gives it to you. Yeah, Cooper looking him, as in Petey can straight in the eye, asking the question, saying, that's not it, mate. Townsend, the touch inside for Thornton. He was prone about five minutes ago, Louis Townsend, so he has also recovered. It's a bit tight here. They need a quick switch to play, don't they, CT? They do, and they've just done that. Well, switched it long anyway, and out of danger. Just absolutely pumped it, Tom Stewart. Now Jacob Bailey. Matt Swan struggling, and Michael Bolch just checking if he is all right as Leo Bertos goes to ground after the contact from Tassel. Yeah, I think Bolch will like to keep Matt Swan out there for the remainder of the game. He's only had limited minutes this year, but it's his experience how to close out a game. Bolch if they're fatiguing, you'd want to get some fresh legs out there, but the issue is Maitland's fresh legs have played four matches of under-20s. Maybe Luke Jennings should go out there and obviously he's been in goal, so he hasn't done too much running, so it's probably the freshest of the lot. Probably the worst suggestion I've heard from you today, Bart. Here's <laughs> Justin McAuliffe. Now Swan. Trying to dink one over the top to his brother, oh. who gets away from Eisenhower. Now into Duggan. It falls for Louis Townsend. Oh. And it's a goal-saving block from Tom Davies. Can I say full credit to Matt Swan. He could have easily gone down there. The keepers clipped him. He could have easily gone down for a penalty, but he, he stayed on his feet. Well, yeah, absolutely. And you wouldn't see that in the World Cup. <laughs> but the thing is, he, he, he believed he could score. So Swan to Swan. Duggan had an air swing. And then Townsend with his shot blocked by Tom Davies. And it was an open goal. It was last chance to learn stuff from the experienced young defender from Hamilton, Tom Davies. In his 87th match for the club in the NPL at just 21. Yeah, it's quite amazing, isn't it? Playing so many matches for such a young player. He's actually played more matches for Hamilton Olympic than Jacob Bailey and Reese Cooper. They're both in their 86th this afternoon. And just on Tom Davies, he left for half a season last year. McAuliffe just chipped it, but Kyle Hodges, experienced at the back, he headed clear. But it's Maitland who have had the best chances lately. And Hamilton, they desperately want three points here. Tom... I should say Matt Trott just skewing that one over the touchline. Yeah, he just had to put his ankle back in the place after that one. Lucas to Sutherland. Sutherland across the face and Matt Trott accepts that one. And he'll take his time, you'd think. Thornton just flicked it up and over the top. It was a, a mistimed clearance from Matt Trott. Tassel ducks in. McGuinness to Cooper. He is afforded some space, and that is a strong tackle from Swan to dispossess Cooper. Yeah, very well timed. That could have went either way. But very well timed by Andrew Swan. 
Now Sutherland, he's got Tassel backtracking. Distributes back to McGuinness. Bertos with a back heel. It was decent build up, but it just lacked the polish. It's been the issue for both sides this afternoon. Tom Duggan with the tug on Tom Stewart. That was smart by Tom Duggan. Just to break down play, slow it up a little bit. Probably Alle deserved a yellow card for yeah, it as well. Allowed Maitland's defence to sort of set a little bit. Great play. Oh. Yeah, great touch from Sutherland. Cody Lucas into yeah. the middle. Scott Pettit was there. Made four for Sutherland. He was just too short. It almost bounced over his head. If he was maybe a foot taller, could have had the chance to drop that one off his head onto his boot and have a strike on goal. And a poor touch from Pettit. You don't see that very often. McAuliffe. Hodges got himself in between the two Maitland attackers. Oh, great touch. And a great touch from Pettit. And Cooper down just to the right, about 10 metres outside the box. Now it's and Cooper's time to ask the question, and, and he's going to get some revenge here. Well, Swan will go into the book, so the two Swan boys now with a yellow card. So Andrew and Matt Swan with a yellow each now. And Scott Pettit standing over the free kick. So it's been Leo Bertos for much of the day from the dead ball situations. Now it's Scott Pettit. And you sense he's looking for Jacob Bailey. Sun in the eyes. And Matt Trotten out screaming. Has someone gone down? Pettit's taken it. It's a scuffle. Scott Pettit has scored the free kick. But uh, there is a man down in the box. And I think we're going to have to retake it. It was all happening there. We've got the assistant referee coming over. Could we see a red card out of all of this? You never know when the assistant referee comes over. To be honest, I didn't see it, and uh, I, I doubt it. Well, the half question is, was the ball ever in play? Was it ever in play? I don't think it was. Well, now Peterkin speaking to his other assistant referee. It's a big meeting between... Trot wasn't happy. He sort of rushed over, didn't he? To... Yeah, Matt Tr Trot was furious, and now he's gone into the book. So, according to Peterkin, it was Matt Trott causing all the issues. Obviously, something happened prior to that because Trott rushed off his line to, to sort of come to the aid of somebody. But um... The former Mariners goalkeeper. He's fired up. Six matches in the A-League for the Central Coast. He knows what it's like at the very top in this country. And in the heat of battle, this is a crucial no. moment for Matt Trott. Oh. He got cleaned up. And he'll just take his time getting back up. But time is of the essence for Hamilton Olympic. And Matt, Trott's, Matt Trott knows that. And he's just going to take his time again here. McGuinness frustrated on the sideline. You can see by his body language. And Maitland are getting exactly, well, everything's going to plan exactly how Maitland would have scripted it. You know what, they're playing smart. They're just a lot of stoppages in this game. The, the game hasn't been fluent. They wanted a point. Worst case scenario, Maitland. And it looks at the moment as though they may get it. They've been structured. They've been organised. Now Carl Thornton. Yet to score this year for Maitland, but has scored some great goals in his time. Both at Maitland and Weston as well. We played previously. Townsend has knocked it straight over the touchline. So Hamilton. Bailey got knocked to ground by Townsend. Very stop start this game at the moment. Maitland just breaking it down, aren't they, Smudge? Yep. Slowing things down with 
Less than 10 minutes to play now. Davies, that's high and over the bar, and that'll frustrate Pete McGuinness. A little shake of the head there from McGuinness as well. So a the... reminder that Hamilton have not beaten Maitland at home here at Darling Street since 2001. That's four matches. Of course, Maitland back in the NPL. They hadn't been in the top flight since 2002. And in 2002, they won one match, Maitland, all season. And that was here at Darling Street. So, there's just something about Hamilton Olympics home ground. Eisenhower to Cody Lucas. Is there a final twist in the tail? Three-point gap between the two sides. Maitland in fourth on 25 points on the ladder. Hamilton in sixth on 22. And as it stands, Maitland will stay inside the top four if the scoreline remains the same. They'll, they'll remain in the top four anyway because of the goal difference anyway if Olympic do get the result. Hamilton... Next week, they play Lakes. Maitland, a really tough assignment against Edgeworth. Davies. McGuinness. It's a great ball. Straight onto the boot of Jared Sutherland. Great run from Sutherland. Back to Reese Cooper and Matrod again. Michael Botch grits his teeth. He knew how big that was because Reese Cooper was unmarked in the box and he just couldn't quite find the power to beat Matt Trott. That was a great opportunity. Great run by Sutherland. That's where he's great. One-on-one -on -one going forward, attacking the space. Got past the defender, laid off to Cooper. Cooper just didn't connect 100%. He connected, but what a save by Trott. Now some cramp. This will just take a little bit more time out of the match. James Tassel struggling out there. It's a left leg. Smudge also got a cramp of a different type. He's just gone off to have a little twinkle, little start. Well, he's just getting psyched up for the last uh, minutes of this one. Adam Duggan is going to replace Tassel. The brother of Tom. Part of that Maitland side who won the under-20s grand final last year. The heart of the defence, Adam Duggan, former Magic youngster as well. Grew up in Maitland, now back at the Magpies. Sutherland almost brought it down. It's just gone down, I think, another couple of degrees in the stands. It is uh, getting cooler and cooler. Sutherland. Got Brown jockeying him, who gives away the foul. And they're just slowing things down. Continually here, Maitland. They're so close now to that golden point it'll be if they come away with a share of the points this afternoon. If you have just joined us, eight first-team players out for Maitland this afternoon. And they're holding Hamilton Olympic at nil-nil. Eisenhower, well, he almost went straight to McAuliffe with that ball. It was low. Now Swan takes it out of the air. Andrew Swan sort of got a bit confused. It went between his legs. He lost it. Thornton, McAuliffe. Now Duggan. And Swan, he almost turned it over to Jacob Bailey, who was just sitting on his heels there. Thornton. Possibly three minutes here. Three minutes extra at a guess. He 
got to give full credit to Michael Bolch of Maitland. Snag a point this afternoon. He's put out a very organised side. A much more inexperienced NPL side than he's got on paper on the squad list. Boys, just on Zach Thomas at the back. He's been superb for Maitland as well. He's been rock solid. Both both defensive defences have been rock solid. But uh, the young boy at the back's been superb. He's won everything in the air. Maitland's back line's nice and high at the moment. And you can see Adam Duggan has moved into centre back there. Grant Brown out to the right with that injury to Tassel. Thornton gets brought down. Maybe a little clip of the heels from Leo Bertos. And that's exactly what Maitland will want. Scott Pettit. Seven goals in his last nine matches. Hasn't been able to break the shackles this afternoon, or has he? Here he is. Pettit running at defenders. Into the middle. Duggan with a shanked clearance away. Swan gets there first. Kyle Hodges was arriving. He's pushed very high up. Kyle Hodges, Tom Duggan. Trying to put on the afterburners as he charges after that one. It will be a Maitland throw. So a Maitland throw here. Swan ties up his shoelace in back play. And the time continues to be wasted. First it was Tom Duggan, then McCarla. For now, Liam Thornton. Just ticks some more time out of this one. Undermanned. And still level Maitland. Nearing the end goal, and Michael Bolch is saying he wants it in the corner. He's happy with the point. Duggan gets pulled down there by Davies, but Peter can wave it away. I thought there were definite, definite calls for a free kick and probably should have deserved one there, Tom Duggan. Thornton with the throw to Duggan, who gets pulled to ground again by Davies. They're in a bit of a tangle. You know what? He's been a pest, hasn't he, Duggan, for uh, Olympic? He's been very good. I've been impressed with him, to be honest. Yeah, same. He's, he's real, really been a pain. Oh. Townsend goes into Cody Lucas. Into stoppage time here. Round 18 of the NPL Northern New South Wales. One of the tightest matches we've seen this season. Limited chances and still level. Maitland have stymied Hamilton Olympic. Oh, that seemed like a foul. Thornton trying to run with the ball on the ground. He gets back up. He keeps running and then wins the foul. And that might be enough for Maitland this afternoon. Yeah, Michael Bosby very pleased with his trips, considering all the players out. I think Pete McGuinness would be a bit more frustrated of the two coaches. Well, this, this point would be like gold for Maitland this afternoon. Oh. Jacob Bailey knocked to ground. Out comes the card for Zach Thomas. So after going 55 matches without being held scoreless, Hamilton seem as though they're going to be held scoreless for the second time in three matches. Game's not over, but until Petey can puts that whistle in and blows it. McGuinness launches it. Trot really has to claim. He knows he has to. The scramble is on. Boots flailing everywhere, including that of Scott Pettit. It would be a heartbreaker for either side to concede now. Cody Lucas, now straight to Townsend. Duggan, Swan, who trips and falls. And there's nothing separating these two sides for the fourth time in their last six matches. 
So tight, so tense this afternoon. And the injury ravaged Magpies have produced an incredible performance to take a point and frustrate Hamilton Olympic this afternoon. An Olympic, their wait for a win against Maitland here at home. It will stretch to an 18th year, not since 2001. But they claimed all three points against the Magpies. Full time at Darling Street. Hamilton Olympic nil. Maitland FC nil. And Chris Turner, Michael Bolch will be beaming. Pete McGuinness, he will be immensely frustrated. Well, if you look at their two heads, Bolch is glowing. Glowing, glowing. And Pete McGuinness, that cap is barely, barely on his head at the moment. He's just... He's gutted. He, he knows that, that's, that their points that have gone away. Michael Bolch, he'd be absolutely ecstatic with that, that uh, point this afternoon. And, and so they should be because, they, as you said before, Smudge, they're organised. They're in the game. They set up defensively very well and, and uh, they had opportunities as well. Olympic, gee, felt for them. They just didn't happen for them. They, it just wasn't their day. Yeah, and talking to Pete McGinnis prior to the game, he said that, you know, it's tough. It's their fourth game in 14 days. And... The, They've had some tough games as well. But, yeah, it was a very stop-start sort of game. It sort of suited Maitland, didn't it, the, the stop-start? Neither team got into any fluency or any flow. It was a stodgy affair, wasn't it? A stodgy affair. But, um, yeah, of the two coaches, I think Michael Bosch would be more pleased. They, they, they remain three points ahead of Hamilton, but also with a 10-goal difference. So... They're in the box seat to make the top four at the moment. I think Bolch will be very pleased. He gets a few trips back next week against Wedgeworth. We'll make it tough. However, Hamilton play Lakes next week. They get the three points. Maitland's got a tough game against Edgeworth. Anything could happen. And again, issues for these two sides at this particular point. You know, you've got Maitland to have won one match away from home. And that continues after this afternoon's result. And Hamilton at home, at their home ground, a place that's meant to be a fortress... They've won just two of their last 11. That's got to play on your mind coming into the last four rounds of the season. To be honest, you know, the players wouldn't even know that stat, Bart. You're the one who's... <laughs> so, um... It, I'm sure... I'm sure there is... You, you know if you've won at a particular ground consistently. And you know if you've, you're have you playing at home and you think, gee, we're, we haven't tasted success. We haven't sung the team song in those dressing rooms for a while. You know as a player, I think. If I was a player, I would know. Yeah, probably. I know, the, I know the grounds that you've lost at. I know well, I've, always, I've always struggled at Edgeworth. Always, it's always been a bit of a battle at Edgeworth. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think, um, you know, both sides will, you know, regroup during the week. It's, it's going to be a big push. It could come down to the final game of the season, who makes the top four. Obviously, the top three are going to be settled. And for the result today with Edgeworth beaten, well, it's, it's still in play, but they're 2-0 up against Charlestown. For me, they've got at least one and a half hands on their premiership trophy. And They've got a pretty decent run home in there. And they'll be right. <laughs> okay. That was brilliant. Um, next week, of course, Maitland. They're playing Edgeworth in the match of the round. That one at Jack McLaughlin Oval. We're looking forward to that one, CT. And, um, and Lake Macquarie take on Hamilton next week. So that's a big match for Hamilton away from home at uh, Macquarie Field. Now, of course, Wednesday night, Broadmeadow Magic up against Canberra. Looking forward to that huge clash. Hopefully Magic can do uh, Northern New South Wales proud. And the NPL show, of course, on Thursday, 6.30, with you and Smudge. That'll be good fun. We're absolutely looking forward to it, Bart. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on Thursday night. And good luck to Magic on Wednesday. All right, boys. Thanks again for this afternoon. Full time here at Darling Street. And it finished Hamilton Olympic nil, Maitland FC nil.